Well, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Alfred Craig, and I'm excited about being with you this morning. And I'm glad to have each of you with me. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made. And of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it. Praise God. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to a very special word that I got for you this morning. I believe a revelation that I received from the Lord Jesus Christ about 1985. You know, while living uh, at that time, struggling and live at the bottom of my church there in Coolidge, Arizona, and, you know, trying to really discover God's plan and how does this thing really work, praise God. And the Lord began to really share some things with me, which I'm going to share some, my story with you on that today, because while living in the bottom of the church, although it was an extreme situation in my life, God taught me some things, the difference between living by my talent versus living by his blessing on my life. And uh, and sometimes if you're not careful, you won't really be able to distinguish the difference between that. You know, in other words, you know, back in uh, 1991, 1971, I graduated from high school. And at that time, I was not really certain as to the direction God wanted me to go in. Uh, so, you know, uh, I used to cut a hair, you know, uh, do it, you know while we're at, I was in school, you know, my friend's hair during that time, you know, make a lecture of money and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, so when the high school counselor called me in and asked me, all right, what are your goals? What, are, what, what do you desire to do? Well, you know, uh, I, I had a talent in the area of cutting hair. I cut my friend's hair. Praise God, making 50 cents a hair. I cut. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. That was good lunch money. Praise the Lord. But anyway, uh, uh, they made a way for me to uh, go to uh, barber school in Phoenix, Arizona. And so uh, because that was a talent that I had, I kind of followed my talent in that area, went to school, graduated in 1971, uh, went into a, a real good hair salon there uh, in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and through my talent, developing my talent, along with good mentoring from a good friend of mine who was the owner of the business, you know, my business succeeded. I, you know, man, my, my, my clientele grew you know, I mean, almost immediately and things like that. It was, it was great. It was excellent. And, you know, and so as far as, you know, and so my thought was then, well, I'll go ahead and, you know, function in my talent, you know, with hairdressing and, you know, enjoy, you know, this, this ride, praise God. And then possibly even go to school to become an attorney, you know, using that money I was making as hairdressing, him to go through school to be an attorney. But of course, bills came, <laughs> glory to God. And I never, I was not able to really get in there and, 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 and do what I really wanted to do as far as in the hair industry. I mean, I mean, as far as as an attorney, so I continued to develop my skill, my talent as a hairdresser, and and on and on the natural side, it looked like I was being very successful because you know I bought me a new car, you know, a nice townhouse, you know, I mean, you know, I, I was living a good life, wore nice clothes. So as a, as a, at that time, as a, a like a 18, 19 year old kid, I was doing pretty good as far as from a natural perspective. But in 1974, I got born again. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And at that time, not really knowing what God was doing with my life, I started sensing a, 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 a desire now for ministry. I started sensing a desire to, 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 uh, to study the word of God and things like that. And along with, at the same time, I'm still functioning as a hairdresser, being successful. But the more I'm studying the word of God, the more I'm trying to find out, okay, now God, I'm seeing some things in the Bible that's letting me know that's another level that I can live at, but not really understanding that because that time, back in, this is 1974, at that time, you know, most of the churches at that time, they really teach you anything beyond go to work and pay your tithes, you know what I mean, things like that. They didn't really take it any farther than that. And so that's what I did. I work hard. You know, I paid my tithes and stuff like that, but all the time I'm still studying, I'm still studying, I'm still studying to see, okay, God, what, what's, what's going on here? And what happens is, you know, uh, for the next 10 years, I sort of like function both as a hairdresser, uh, you know, during the week, <laughs> and, a, and, and, and then in 1976, I became a pastor, and I started functioning as a pastor on the weekends. <clears throat> so for like 10 years, I was like a hairdresser and a pastor you know, uh, uh, both of those, because I, I pastoring, praise God, love pastor, love teaching the word of God, and yet I also loved, you know, uh, being a hairdresser. But then all of a sudden in 1985, you know, uh, while living in the bottom of the church, because at that time, I'm, 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 I'm figuring out, God, you're making a transition in my life, not understanding what's going on 
in those areas. I feel a call to move into full time ministry, but really I got to take care of my family. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I got to take care of my family. So, you know, how am I going to move into full time ministry when when most of the churches I knew at that time were selling chicken dinners, having bake sales? Most of the pastors I knew they were struggling. The ministries were struggling, things like that. And and I really couldn't see how I could make that transition. Are you following me? From uh uh you know uh you know living you know being a barber, I've been a hairdresser and taking care of my family versus going into full time ministry. And yet I kept feeling that pull to go into full-time ministry. So how, how do you make that transition and things like that? And so my, you know, me making some bad mistakes and bad choices, a couple of times I even went out and well, went full-time in ministry, you know what I mean, without really understanding and, and start and I almost starved. You know what I mean? You know, and that's how I ended up in the bottom of the church because I'm trying to I'm trying to do what the, what they were saying, just have faith, just have trust in God. I'm trying to have faith, trying to trust God, and yet no, no money's coming in. Are you following me? The, the, we had great anointed services because I was, you know, loving God, but yet no money was coming in, you know, paying the bills and stuff like that. Most of the women in the church was on welfare or on, you know, on government subsidy or something like that. So I didn't really have that much income coming in, yet we had a very anointed services. Are you following me? So I'm trying to say, God, what in the world's going on here? So so while living in the bottom of the church, because we got to that point, I really couldn't afford to pay anything because I'm pastoring, but not no money's coming in and things like that. My wife, she worked at a little place, and so we would use some of the money that she made to kind of help take care of the bills. But I'm, but I'm seeking God, Lord, what's going on here? You know, why am I not really having a level of success that I see in the Bible in those areas? And that's when one morning, about three o'clock in the morning, while, uh, you know, I'm, I'm upstairs. Our church had like eight rooms downstairs. So while I'm downstairs, I'm, I'm upstairs there in the, in the church, praying at the altar, all of a sudden God gave me a revelation of a scripture. You know how sometimes you can open the Bible and you know, when you open the Bible, God gives you like a, you know, a, that, that particular scripture comes, kind of comes alive to you. This is sort of what happened in those areas. You know, I'm not going to say God spoke to me audibly at that time, but it was just as strong as an audible voice. Are you following me? When God gave me this revelation and the revelation that God gave me was in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number one through 13. And, and as God gave that to me. Uh, this is what it says. You, you might have your Bible you can open with me all of a sudden too, but this is this scripture is kind of leaped out of the page and a brightness. You know, if I think about it back to back in that day, it was like a God just enlightened. You know, what I mean, uh, this word to me, a revelation came to me in this area concerning this particular scripture. And in Deuteronomy uh, chapter twenty-eight and verse one through thirteen, it says this: "And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God." to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God shall will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So God is saying, okay, if you will walk in my word and get this revelation today, things get ready to change in your life. Verse number two, this is what verse two says, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God is saying now that there's a level of living that you can have where now if you're transitioning from talent and trying to learn all the, 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 the secular things, which I believe in the throw up marketing and things like that, you know, uh, but he said there's a level you can go to now that you can transition to. He says where the blessings now are going to come on you and the blessings are going to overtake you. Hallelujah. That means that without you even stressing out of it, trying to work three or four jobs, trying to trying to trying to to, to have, run a business and a church at the same time. Are you following? Me? You know, stressing out. He said the blessing the favor of God, supernatural connections, supernatural wisdom, supernatural ability is going to come on you and overtake you. In other words, you're going to start living at a new level in your life. And then he says in verse number three, he says this, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle and the increase of thy kind, 
and the flocks of your sheep. Well, this right here uh, 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 is referring to the business they ran. Because at that time, they did not work in Microsoft or Honeywell. They were farmers. So you got that. So God is saying, your business is getting ready to increase. And it's going to bless and get ready to come on you, favor, increase, supernatural uh, anointing. You know, uh, it's going to come on you now on your business. Or if you're in ministry, and that's what God has called you to in ministry, the blessing and the favor of God is getting ready to come on your ministry. And it's going to come on you in such a way that it's going to be the anointing doing it instead of you using all your natural human talent to make it happen. You follow me? And so this is what God is saying here. And then he says here, in verse number uh, five, he says, blessed shall be your basket and your store. That refers to your banking, account, your checking account and your savings account, your IRAs, your, you know, your, all, you know, uh, your investment. He said that I'm getting ready to cause favor to get on your, on, on, on your, on your savings account, your blessing account, and on your business, on your ministry. And this is getting ready to start coming on you because now the anointing is going to be even beyond your natural talent. You got that? I'm a talented speaker. I got a lot of charisma. I'm a talented hairdresser. God said, but now the anointing going to come on there. I'm getting ready to anoint your talent. Now, you see what I'm talking about? He's not going to let, let, get rid of your talent, but he's not going to anoint the talent that he's given you in those areas. And it's getting ready to start happening supernaturally versus just natural human uh, 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 ways. And then he says here in verse number six, blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall. You see, now, now it's the Lord getting involved in this thing. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and shall flee before thee seven ways. Because when the blessing and the favor of God come on your life, and it comes on you with the anointing. Enemies are going to rise up against you. Jealous people are going to rise up against you. Ignorant Christians are going to rise up against you. Are you following me? So you got to understand that you don't have to fight those battles. Because the anointing is doing it. And the, yoke, the anointing is the yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. Working with you and your talent to cause you to be successful in a level higher than what you have thought about. You got that. This is that Ephesians 3.20. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all you can ask or think according to his power working in you. You got that today? And then he says here uh, in verse number eight, he said, the Lord shall. Now I want you to see the difference now. Before, you know, and, and when I was in business, I could say Dr. Craig shall or Alfred Craig shall. In my business as a hairdresser, I, I could cut hair. I could, you know, I could style hair. I could do, I could do all these things in a natural realm, which was wonderful. But now it goes from Alfred doing it with his talent and his skills and his natural ability. That now it said the Lord shall. That now I got, I got him working with my ability, his super working with my natural. You got that, and that's what God is doing in your life today. I'm here today to help you transition from just your natural talent to him adding his super to your natural and it and causing and creating an explosive force for, of God on your business, on your ministry, on your personal life, and in all that God calls you to do. Now, listen to what it says here in, in verse number uh, eight. And the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee. You got that? He shall command the blessing. When something is commanded, it means that somebody coming from a higher level, speaking to a lower level. So God is saying, from, from my perspective, with my power, my influence, and my ability, I'm getting ready to command, glory to God, the blessing upon you and your storehouses, your storehouses, your bank accounts, savings accounts, investments, your businesses your churches, whatever God has called and anointed you to do, the favor and the blessing of God is resting upon you from this day forward. This is what God is saying. He said, he said it, and in all, the Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouses and in all you set your hand unto. Isn't that blessed? 
then now God is saying something supernatural is going to come on your natural ability and all that you set your hand to do, whatever, however many businesses you go in, however many churches that you plant, however many uh, uh, books you write, or whatever God has done, he said the blessings are going to come on you in a commanded way. It's going to be like a force from God coming on your life in a commanded way. He said, and, and in everything you set your hand unto. Glory <laughs> to God. Was that time I was a hairdresser? So God going to bless my hands. Whatever your hands are doing, the word hand means the power or the ability or the talent God has given you. Now, he says, he shall bless you in the land, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth you. That means that God going to cause you to prosper where you're at. You follow me? At that time, I was living in the bottom of the church. <laughs> you follow me? And, uh, you know, uh, my, my, our, our, my office became my wife's and I's master bedroom. Uh, the classroom during the week became my children's uh, 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 bedrooms. You know, and the baptismal pool became their swimming pool. It's God, hallelujah. But he said, I'm going to bless you in the land which I've given you. That means that right now where you're at, God is going to supernaturally confirm right now where you're at, wherever you're living right now, whatever business you're having right now. God's going to put his super on your natural right where you're at. And this is what began to start taking place even in our lives while we're living there in the bottom of the church there in Coolidge, Arizona. This is what started happening. People started coming uh, uh, to the church. With, they know I was living at the church. To, you know, can you do my hair? I said, yes. You know, I, you know nobody was doing that at first. You know, and, uh, and, and all of a sudden I started getting more people coming to the church to do their hair. I had a little place downstairs that I would cut their hair at. Until pretty soon, uh, my sister... Uh, Deborah had, uh, she was, you know, she used to go to this one hair salon there in Coolidge, which was an all white women's shop. And she was talking to the owner and the owner said, you know what, your brother, would your brother like to come work for us? Work with us? I, she said, I'll check with him. So she took me, I said, oh, no problem. I got other people come to the church. So I, I, I moved from the church to a hair salon, which is an all white, all white women hair salon. And in Coolidge, Arizona, where I lived at, that, that had never happened before. But yet, when I got there, immediately, people just started packing to that place, glory to God. You know, come from north, east, south, and the west. It amazed me because now God is putting his super on my natural, and, and God's giving me creativity like I've never had before. God's giving me, uh, 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 a, 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 it was a supernatural drawing of people that I didn't know how they were coming. They would just come from everywhere which had not happened before, especially in Coolidge, Arizona, because most of the people at that time that even had hair salons was doing it part-time in their garage and like that. But God now has had me doing it in, 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 in one of the best malls there in Coolidge at that time. And I was doing it in an all-white salon, in an all-white women's salon, and yet God was causing me to prosper. And so not long after that, I started my business. God put in my heart to start my own business. And so I transferred from there and opened my own business uh, there in Coolidge, Arizona. And again, nothing like that ever happened before. I started a business on the main thoroughfare, praise God. You know what I mean? There and God supernaturally put me in business, you know, in those areas. And gave me, you know, uh, uh, the guy that I was I, I was renting from had a whole hair salon full of furniture that I needed. And, uh, and, and, and God caused him to me to get favor with him. And because uh, he had he just in the store just sitting there, he said, "What?" He told me to make him an offer. I made him an offer three hundred dollars all I had, and God gave me all the chairs I need, the back bar I need, the sinks I need, all for three hundred dollars. Praise God! I, that's how I got in my first business. So, because the blessing is on my life, and when blessing comes in your life, favor comes in your life, and God will give you things that 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 you might not be able to afford in the natural realm, but favor and faith will create supernatural blessing and, and anointing in your life that you don't get any other way. And so I went in there first, then from that point, I went, I went to another city called Casa Grande, Arizona, and started another hair salon over there, praise God. And I'm getting ready to, to move in, in, in those areas and start more businesses, no hair salons, but then God spoke to my heart. He said, look, he says, now I needed to show you how it worked in the place where you're at. I, I want to show you that it worked in the church where you're at, the people will come to the church I want to show you that they were working in an all-white women's salon, you know what I mean, uh, 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 you know, uh, that never happened before. I want to show you that they were working in a small town where there had never been a full-time hair salon there before. I need to show you that they were work in the land which you are right now. In other words, I will cause you to 
I will cause you to bloom where you're planted. You got that? And so then God showed me, said, now, what I, but I did that to show you, because I know you could, you, you could be convinced that was your, that's where your talent was at. But I now want you to take that into the church world, and I want you to teach people the principle, the, the difference between the, 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 the talent blessing versus the anointing blessing. And that's what I got to you. I'm bringing to you today as a special word from the Lord that God wants you to, you know, because, you know, I'm not saying leave your business, but God wants to anoint your business. And, and, and he's going to anoint your hands. He's going to anoint your mind creatively to do some things that your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, some things that has not entered into your heart what he has prepared for you at a level that you never dreamed of. Now, Notice that God says here also in verse 9, he said, The Lord shall establish unto thee a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. In other words, God's ways are not man's ways. You know, you're following. Man says, all right, go to school, get education, which is wonderful. Are you following? But don't go in beyond that. You know, all this supernatural, don't trust in all. God says, all right. I want you to walk in my ways now. I want you to walk now in my ways that, that my anointing would do it, that I will cause the blessing to come upon your life in those areas, that I'll work beyond. The Bible says that my ways are higher than your ways as far as the, uh, as far as the, the you know, heavens are from the earth. So God said, I want to take you to a next level of living, you know, where you live beyond your talented blessings versus the anointing blessing your life. So God said, I'm going to teach you my ways now. How do I live? teach you my ways? Because my ways is going to cause some increase to come in your life like you never saw before. And so then in verse 11, God said, this is a promise. He said, you're walking my ways and you'll learn my ways of doing things. He says in verse number 10, he says, and he says in verse, I'm sorry, yeah, verse number 10, and all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and shall be afraid of the Lord. Everybody's going to begin to start seeing that, you know what? You know, uh, there's something different about what's on Billy or what's on Beverly or what's on you know, uh, Angel or what's on Dr. Craig. There's something different on them because they're going to see that you're called by the name of the Lord. That this thing, there's something supernatural happening on your life. And that it's, and it's beyond what people's eyes can see. It's beyond human ways. And God said, okay, that's right. That's right. It's beyond human ways. And, uh, and because this is what people are missing in the body of Christ. They, they, they're trying to bring secularism into God's way, but it don't work that way. You follow me? God wants to bless you. He wants to put his hand on your talent, on your gifting. Uh, you follow me? Montoya, he wants to put his blessing on, them, on that writing hand that you have. You follow me? God wants to do it and, and let people know his ways of doing things. You know, the Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Matthew 6, uh, I think it's six, chapter 6, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things to be added to you. One scripture says, Seek God's kingdom and his ways of doing things. And see, so God's ways will, and his anointing will destroy every yoke of poverty and lack and insufficiency on your life. You got that? Now, it says this, uh, verse 11, And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord, uh, 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 which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give unto thee. In other words, you're operating in God's ways by a covenant God made with Abraham. And the Bible said, If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So every promise that God made to Abraham, your family, is yours today. But that promise God made to Abraham is a, is a, is a promise where the anointing of the blessing and the favor of God will operate on your life in such a way that people will know that God Almighty is doing it. And that's what I'm saying today. God's lifting you up to another level of blessing and favor on your life this morning. And notice what he says in verse number 12 now. He says this, And the Lord shall open unto thee. And that's my, that's my anointing, the, the anointing blessing. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. In other words, you're not going to depend upon people 
opening up their wallet to you, loaning you money and, you know, having to, you know, kiss them in your rear end to, you know, to, to, for them to give you something. He said, no, I'm getting ready to open my bank account to you. Glory to God. You're going to live out of my favor. You're going to live out of my anointing, out of my blessing. I'm going to anoint your mind supernaturally in a way. I'm, I'll put thoughts in your mind and creativity in your mind that you never even dreamed of. Are you following me? I'm going to open up my good treasures to you and the heavens. Are going to give the rain into your land and season. In other words, during that time, because they were an agrarian society, they depended upon the rain to come in season to make sure their, 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 their crops were watered. And God is saying this to you today. This is your season. And this is uh, that I'm watering right now with my word and with my presence. Are you following me? The seeds I put in your life. And now the watering is getting ready to cause your crops to just spring forth. I think, I think because Zechariah said, I'm going to call showers a blessing. I'm going to call showers a blessing to come on your life uh, in the name of Jesus. And so this is what the Lord is saying right now he, that he's doing in your life. And, uh, and, uh, and so everybody say showers a blessing. So get ready for showers of blessing to come on you, to come on your, on your, on your household, come on your business, come on your church. Uh, get ready for multiplication to happen. Because God said, I'm, uh, this is the season that I'm causing rain to come down from heaven to rain on the business that you have. But I'm putting my super on your natural. He said, I'm going to bless all the work of your hand. This is verse 12. And you're going to lend unto many nations and not borrow. Glory to God. Um, God said, I'm taking you to the whole nother level where you're going to have more than enough blessing and favor on your life. Where you're going to be able to help people in a whole nother dimension. You got that today? And in verse 13, it, it says this. this is, now, this is the scripture God gave me that, that morning. This is that about 3 o'clock in the morning back in 1985. Now, a lot of people think that I'm just out the money and I'm just a, a prosperity teacher. No, no, no. I'm a revelation teacher. God gave me this revelation and I'm, and I'm sharing it with the body of Christ. Are you following me? So it's not about the car, not about the house, not about the clothes. It's about a revelation that God gave me. And it's to the body of Christ so we can begin to function at a higher level as far as our living. You know what I mean? So the church ain't got to be having car washing and bake sales. Pastors and ministers, they got to be struggling in their ministry financially and things like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, whatever area God's got you in, God said, I'm taking, the, I'm taking the struggle and the stress and the strain out of what I've got you doing. And you're going to begin operating the anointing. And you're going to be a blessing because of the anointing on your life. You got that? Not just looking for a blessing. You're going to be a blessing in Jesus' name. So the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. Do you get that today? Amen. Praise God. Uh, he, he says, uh, I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt be above only. Not sometimes up and sometimes down. Sometimes almost level to the ground. But he said, you're going to be above only and not beneath. If thou shalt hearken to the, to the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. We're not under the law. We have to do the law anymore. But we do need to put what God gives us through this revelation into action. The book of the Bible says, faith without works is dead. So you got to put this word into action in your life. You got to take this revelation and flow. Now, one, as I'm ending, one thing God spoke to my heart, this when I was in business and, and I took it to the church. God said, now, what I want you to do, because I need, cause you want this blessing on your business, you want this blessing upon your, upon your, uh, uh, upon your ministry. He said, one thing that you have to do to, to walk in this supernatural blessing he said, the first one-tenth, the tithe of everything that comes into your business before you pay your employees, before you pay electricity, but whatever you do, I want you to take that first one-tenth of it and I want you to give it. Because, because the tithe, he says, is a principle. When the book of Malachi said, I will open the windows of heaven, I'll pour you out a blessing, and you should not have room enough to receive it all. So I, I begin to do that. You know, I, I begin to tithe, and, and I, as I tithe, that blessing continue to operate and the anointing blesses versus the talent blessing. People are talented and they get a certain level of blessing because of their talent. But when you get the anointing on your life, you got that, it goes on the whole level of level. God said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. So I want to encourage you today to, you know, to take your business to the next level 
become a tither of your family, and then begin to walk in this blessing and listen to what I just shared with you over and over again. Amen. Now, if you know if you if you're if you're part of I am ministries, there's a there's a there's a there's a, a link right there you can give. If you're not a part of the I am ministry, but you say, Pastor, I need to start tithing. I need to start giving, then it's important for you right now to, to start right now today. Don't put off for tomorrow what you should be doing today, amen? Because God wants you to transition from the natural realm and the natural talent into the blessing and the favor of God, the anointed blessing. Well, this has been a great time being with you today, and I'm excited about being with you. Go ahead and share this word today on, on your own uh, Facebook page. You know, like it and then share with other people because this message today is going to help people and take you from the talent blessing to the anointing blessing. Well, until tomorrow at the same time, may God's riches and his very best be yours. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.